Hi lovelies and welcome to the witch's cookery. I have exciting news! It's what I would have said if I would have popped, but unfortunately I'm still a very, very pregnant. Today I'm going to share some green witchcraft with you, land lore, magic and medicinal herbs to help labor, delivery and other topics related to that that we will not mention in quite clear terms because YouTube would punish me. I also have some yummy kitchen witchery for you for lactation, recovery and I promise you even if you haven't just squeeze something the size of a turkey out of your hoo-ha, still darn delicious. Depending on how things progress, I might even take you along to bring little crotch goblin Earthside. You see, I remain hopeful and reveal the name taken from German mythology. If you don't meet baby today, let me know your guesses down in the comments below. I should also pack my labor bag with some witchy tips for you and tell you why the stork brings the babies and what that has to do with Germanic mythology. But first let's go wild foraging because nothing comes me more than a lovely walk in nature. I don't know if you could tell, but I am very antsy. Well, let's go. Not gonna miss this. Technically, I'm only 38 weeks, but I am a super impatient person. My first one came early, so I'm like, no, I'm done, I'm done. Get, get it out, out. Right, any eviction method in the book. Pineapple, dates, jiggling, wiggling, anything short of doing a headstand, which now that I think about it would probably be counterproductive anyway. And I asked yesterday on Instagram for your tips. I've never been told by so many people to do the dirty. Unfortunately, things are already wide open and um, baby's head is basically just, you can feel it with your fingers. Personally, I would prefer a different first encounter between baby and daddy and poking little crotch goblin in the eye. So we shall forego this. But I wouldn't be the green witch that I am if I would not also turn to mother nature and the wonderful herbs she offers. So today I'm looking for two plants that are wonderful for inducing labor. You should not take them before 36 weeks unless you live in a state that has medieval laws and you find yourself in a position where you might need that. On that topic, please don't trust advice from the internet. Very unsafe. If you have to go the natural route, find a licensed herbalist, talk with your doctor, ask in a pharmacy, make sure that person knows about your history. Plant medicine can be very strong and very effective, but it is not always. Be aware that you can cause more harm than good to yourself, to a potential baby. Be aware that you always need a plan B, meaning visiting an auntie out of state or whatever else. So what am I collecting to evict baby? First of all, raspberry leaves. Now is the perfect time to collect them. They're young and fresh and full of all that goodness. They relax your muscles. You want things to soften up down there because uterine contractions. They soften the cervix and additional benefit they also are very calming. And you can use some afterbirth to stimulate lactation. And the other magical plant is Ladies Mantle, which has a thousand and one very magically sounding folk names. At least in German we call it the alchemist's plant or the coat of the gods. It is especially used for anything related to women's troubles. Do slaver to help with recovery or menstruation pains. You can tone your uterine muscles. Now the leaves grow in this like kind of like a beaker shape so they really collect the dew well and it was believed back in the days that if you would collect that dew that gathers there and wash your face with it you will gain eternal beauty. It would like rejuvenate your skin and make it all soft. Haven't tried it yet but I might. Always open to cheap beauty products. Actually in the 16th century people used it to restore their virginity if they had been naughty before marriage. Because that plant was so associated with healing and restoring anything down under. They also believe that it could erase any signs of premarital sex. So let's find that goodness and brew a tea. Desk 
Now, of course, we're all educated adults here. We all know how babies are made. The stork brings them and drops them in a cute little wrap bundle in front of your door. Or so I wish. Lindsay and me, we don't, we don't mash. Why that story? Why does the stork bring the babies? Now, I did a little bit of historical digging and it turns out that story is likely to stem from traumatic mythology. But not only here, but in many cultures around the world, the stork is associated with fertility. For example, in North mythology the stork represented family values and commitment to each other and we see it as a symbol of fidelity or monogamous relationships that is mainly because the stork is believed to mate for life not quite true but it is true that they usually return to the same nest and also therefore to the same mating partner in Egyptian mythology what I found super interesting is that the symbol of the stork represents the soul of a person the Ba and the return of the stork would mean the return of the soul to a body so basically reincarnation but even with all of that apparently the roots go back to germany so what do we believe about the stork folk name for the stork in german is adevar the germanic word aude which means as much as joy or luck and bare to carry or to bring so the stork is the joy bringer or the bringer of luck and babies are joy most of the time from a distance they're not crying if they're not yours just kidding i'm really excited for you one that doesn't want to come out and then we also want to look at the timeline because back in the days when anti-conception was not really that evolved yet most babies were born february march and the storks returned here to these lands in march as well if you've watched a couple of my videos you will already know about the most important goddess in the germanic pantheon which is hulda hulda or frau holle so she is said to have her magical lands somewhere not on this earth but you can enter usually through water it's either the wells or rivers or special lakes for example in germany we have the holle teich the holle lake where the legend says you can see her around noon bathing herself in the middle of that lake and this is also where she keeps the souls of the unborn babies now we all know that storks do like water they eat their fish in there and their frogs in there by the way also have you ever seen a stork carrying a frog looks like a very tiny baby anyway so when the time is right Paula sends out her storks and they then deliver the souls of their unborn children to that woman of choice now if you know a little bit more about German traditions and folklore and stories you know that we are a bunch of twisted weirdos. In Bavaria there's actually an old custom. If you stroll through a village there's a good chance that you will see a house and in the front yard there is a big pole looking like a maypole usually with the Bavarian colors blue and white but instead of the ribbons or the green round wreath it will have a stork on top and a heart and then it has all types of baby clothes nailed to it. Now that is called a kinsbaum or a children's tree. Naive as I was I personally always thought that would be erected in your yard when you have a baby. Research that isn't the case. You actually get that erected on your wedding day by your wonderful friends and it shall remind you that within a year you have to have a baby. If you fail to reproduce within a year you have to throw a big beer snack fiesta. I mean everyone that has struggled with fertility issues or miscarriage um, yeah would not want to have that in, in front of my door and look at it every day. But well, tradition. But on to happier topics like kitchen witchery. If you just reproduced and now you have a tiny little human hanging off your tits literally 24-7, you might feel hungry sometimes or hangry. And for that reason, I always like to have some snacks on me. Today I'm going to show you my favorite lactation 
plantation cookies just in case you or someone you know also plans to let that little crotch goblin literally suck the life out of them but also if you are not planning on breastfeeding these are very very delicious and what semi-healthy but also you just you just birthed you just made a human like treat yourself queen and even if you became owner of a tiny human in any other ways i feel they all come with a lot of struggle and difficulties that do very much justify a sugary snack I do have oats in them they are full of nutritional goodness vitamins minerals high in iron zinc magnesium calcium and an excellent source of soluble fiber plus they contain vitamin b to help increase energy elevate mood and fight off exhaustion anxiety stress and depression very very important when dealing with tiny humans also they do contain saponines saponines are a substance that may have a positive effect on hormones related to breast milk production with my first i was eating oats all day every day i can only tell you it seemed to have worked because i was like a, a fountain i threw in some raisins some blueberries just a little bit of natural sugars goodness and of course you want to have a couple of nuts superfood packed with nutritional value i usually prefer walnut but i didn't have walnut i also didn't feel like going shopping so i just <laughs> opted for some almonds and some pecans and they were delicious and you just pack those cookies on a cookie sheet like you can use a spoon or you just use your fingers if you want to have them more round and perfect and stuff like that and then you only have to pop them in the oven for about 12 minutes at 160 degrees celsius and they are done they are super good you can see baby approves too and mommy likes them too but i need some proper food now so this only looks somehow healthy on the outside but i absolutely just dressed a sausage and some salad don't let me fool you i feel like the camera is not focused on me <laughs> Better. As you can see, I ran out of battery, quite literally. So we're doing this casual and I have to pack my hospital bag. I waited a little bit long to pack it this time because the first time around I had it packed like when I found out I was pregnant. So I wanted to share some witchy, spiritual, magical items with you that I will pack in my hospital bag, except from the regular type of uh, stuff. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, finish my snack like clothes and wipes and diapers. Even though one thing I need to share with you, ladies, pack diapers for yourself too. In a hospital, they will give you those like huge ass pads that are about the size of a rolled up towel. And they will just like wriggle around and your entire bed looks like a butcher's table. Like, don't, don't, just don't mess with it. Like get, get diapers for little one, get diapers for you. You will be happier. <coughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> but on to the magical stuff. So I will have my Oracle and my Tarot card deck packed just because I feel like it's a fun little activity to do when little one is born, to do a specific newborn spread, to have some reflection, inspiration for their first weeks or month of life. And if I am filming a birth vlog, I will definitely give you a little inspiration on how you can lay the cards for your new arrival. So my mother-in-law came to be two weeks here to help us with little one. Of course now little one is refusing to arrive. She came bearing gifts and she got me turquoise jewelry, this necklace and also those lovely earrings. When I do this with my hands, I always feel like an absolute pro beauty vlogger. Anyways, I'm not much of a crystal witch. I don't know much about stones, but she said that turquoise is very related to protection for women, good luck for mothers. She herself always has a turquoise ring so I found it really sweet and I will wear that once I can dress myself again and, and feel like a, a new woman. <laughs> Next thing, a little bit of light reading. I don't know if you know Ella Harrison. She makes videos on Vicca and witchcraft. I actually once did an interview with her and she is super sweet. She has also grown up in Bavaria but lived all over the place and now she lives in Latvia or Lithuania. One of the two. And she just wrote a book and she sent it to me! I'm very excited to read it. I already had a little glance inside and it looks so pretty. I mean, in the hospital you really do have a lot of downtime except for staring at the child you just made and marvel over it, which does take up quite some time. But they also sleep a lot, so, you know, 
I do believe that you can already pre-order it, so I will look for the link and see just in case you're interested in some spellspiration. <laughs> These ladies and gentlemen are a lifesaver. Not necessarily super witchy, but I personally go for hypnobirthing, just meaning putting yourself in some sort of meditative state tune out from the world in order to to birth, to not have any pain medication and stuff like that. Mainly because I don't like needles and the thought of having any type of medical intervention freaks me more out than the actual thought of just pain. Not gonna lie though, birth is the worst pain you will ever feel in your life. And any other hypnobirthers here that are like, no, the search is just like a, a, a wave of, of pressure. Go f yourself. In the same way that you would describe a hurricane as a light breeze. But yeah, headphones, listening to guided visualization, guided meditations, can only recommend it. This wonderful little notebook I got from my witchy friend Carrie Ann Hearth and Besom on Instagram and she brought it to the retreat for me. And I do like to write letters to my kiddos. You know, you have those like picture album books where you can put like the baby pictures for the different stages, but I am just super bad at printing out stuff. But sometimes I just feel like I wanna write something to them, what I feel in the moment, but obviously too small to, to understand what I'm blabbing about. So I put like poems there or I put like thoughts there or messages there. And this will be the, the book for little, uh, little one. Almost set the name. And last but not least, cottage witch here. Twinkle lights. Candles are forbidden in my hospital, I guess like in pretty much every hospital for obvious reasons. But what really helps your oxytocin, so that the natural stuff that your body produces to get you in the, the mood for labor is low light, um, cozy lighting. And hospitals are not really well known for that sort of uh, vibe. So if you wanna do that yourself, bring your little twinkle lights and you can also use them later on in the, the room while baby sleeps so or while they're nursing. It's just, just makes it softer and nicer and the entire atmosphere changes. So I hope the next time I see you, I have a little update for you. Have a magical week. Goodbye.